that will do. Bev MacArthur is a member of the Victorian Legislative Council, that is the Upper House, and sitting Liberal member for Western Victoria Region. She's one of the clearest thinking, writing and speaking MLCs in Victorian Parliament and is not afraid to stand by her convictions. Hello, Bev. Oh, hello, Peter. Well, that's a very generous introduction, I must say. Bev, you grew up at a rural property near Tilden, a tiny Victorian country town with a population of around 500. What was that like? Well, it was actually a wonderful uh, life because I rode my pony to school, that naughty little pony, though sometimes jumped out of the school paddock and went home and I'd have to walk. And my, my most frightening memories are trying to beat the plovers who wanted to peck you. Uh, but other than that, I lived an idyllic life in country Victoria in a little weenie school. I think there were only 11 students. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, the one classroom with the one teacher and all of us, but I learned a lot. And then you went on to operate a beef farm near Camperdown for 37 years. Oh, my goodness. How did you do that with oh. husband Stuart? Hang on. Um, yeah, sorry, Bev. You joined the Liberal Party in your 20s, but didn't stand as a candidate until 2018 when you were elected to the Victorian Upper House. What took you so long? Well, actually, I did stand for pre-selection twice, Peter, uh, for the Senate. But in those days, when you were a young political aspirant, um, it wasn't considered uh, wrong that you stood. Uh, the first time I stood, actually, ironically, with Peter Rees, who sadly just passed away. And we stood for the Senate. Uh, and the incumbents were Dame Margaret Guilfoyle, Alan Misson and David Hamer. But... Uh, we actually were, I guess, flying a flag that we were interested political aspirants. And he, of course, went on uh, to be a, a very significant uh, member of the Howard government and so on. And sadly, he's just passed away. But uh, what stopped me standing again? I did stand one more time. and I was defeated for a Senate pre-selection. But um, I then chose to stay at home. And I thought the greatest job and career I could have would be to rear children who were going to be contributors of society and not burdens on society. While my husband was engaged in public service, as you know, he was the member for Karangamide for 23 years. So I thought the best thing I could do was at least be one parent at home, um, making sure the children got the very best of what we could offer out in country Victoria and in life. Well, we're very glad you're in our Victorian Upper House now. Bev, what three issues do you find of most concern to Western Victorians and how can the Liberal Party help? Well, the, the constant refrain, Peter, I get uh, has been since the day I got elected and I was a councillor before that in the Karangamide Shire, is about roads. Um, and I did say at a public accounts and estimates meeting committee meeting to the treasurer. We've now got roads that no longer have potholes. They've got craters. And, you know, what are you going to do about it? And he said, oh, that was just Liberal Party propaganda. I said, no, it's not. So still the constant refrain after four years is don't put uh, reduced speed sides on our roads, just fix them. And, and I've just uh, done a story for the for the local newspapers about wire road barriers, which which this government has a has a preference to sticking in everywhere and um, and not fixing the roads. So we put a wire road barrier to stop us running into a tree, which probably shouldn't be on the side of the road anyway, instead of actually making the roads safer. And they don't get safer by putting wire road barriers down the sides and the middle of them. In fact, in one area, there's 20 accidents, been 20 accidents in about a year. Um, so roads are a significant issue. The other issue that I have found is the actual reduction of liberty that's occurred over this period of time, especially while the, the Premier, who I like to think thinks himself more as an emperor than a Premier, um, has really interfered in people's lives to a, a most draconian level. And uh, 
out in my electorate, there were many councillors that didn't have one case of COVID, but were locked down. And to think that people out in the country had to wear a mask to go for a walk on a road or people in the city, children couldn't play on playgrounds and were locked up for 23 hours a day. I mean, if we lock up a prisoner in Barwon prison for 23 hours a day, we think that's, they must have really committed a very serious crime. But we did that to the whole population here in the metropolitan area. And country people, you know, were, were heavily restricted as well for no good reason. Now, I don't even know what the numbers of COVID are today. Nobody seems to care. Uh, and why should they? If you've got a complaint, like I've had recently, a cough, stay home. Don't give it to everybody. Just stay home. So I think government's interfering in people's lives, telling us what we can do as families, as parents, and, and as business people. It's just a terrible uh, advance in how policy is run in this state. I think that's the other very significant issue. And the fact that you you can't get to a doctor or a hospital if you need one. Um, I've got a young grandchild who was born with a deformity and needs surgery, uh, meant to be operated on at three months. He's now 13 months, no sign of surgery. Um, and that's vital surgery. It's not elective. This whole business of elective surgery is about fixing my nose or my boobs, Peter. Um, <laughs> not, not you know, fixing my hip or you know the, the the congenital deformity that my grandchild's got. A shocking situation where people can't get to hospital and their lives are being shortened because of it. Um, so I think they're the the sort of most significant issue. Get governments out of our lives is my refrain. Yeah, great. Coming up to November 26, Bev, which is coming up very fast, what can Western Victorians do to support you? Uh, well, they can, uh, of course, all come and vote uh, for us at the polling booth, Peter. Um, they can help me on polling booths if anybody would like to do that all around Western Victoria. We do have hundreds and hundreds of polling booths. Um, that would be incredibly helpful. I have another very good candidate standing in the number two position for the upper house, which I'm working very hard to try and see that we can get Joe McCracken elected. Uh, he's a, a councillor in the Colac Otway Shire. I've known him for a long time. Uh, a very uh, strong conservative with great values of what we should all be standing for. And I, I would hope to get him into the upper house. So yes, I could, I could do with any, any amount of manpower, Peter, that, uh, you'd like to swing my way, that would be very helpful. But they could get the message out. And I think the one of the most important messages is, do you want to continue with a government that so restricts your lives, tells you what you can do as parents, as families, as schools, in schools, uh, in your churches? Uh, this, this is not the democracy that we should be having. But also in the upper house, We've had some crossbenchers who might as well have been in the Labor Party because they voted to keep us locked down and re heavily restricted. And they're Andy Medic uh, from the Animal Justice Party in my region. Um, I would hope we would defeat Mr Medic. Uh, Fiona Patton, um, who, who uh, thinks it's more important that we deregulate the sex industry than and making sure that... Uh, you know, people can operate their businesses and, and live their lives as they would wish in northern metro, Fiona Patton from the Reason Party. Of course, the Greens were interest, intricately involved in voting with uh, the government all the time on those draconian laws. Um, uh, you, people have to think very carefully how they vote in the upper house. And often, if you go to a minor party, you've got to be very careful that you're going to get somebody, the, the preference deals that are being done might mean that you don't actually get the outcome you think you're getting. So look very carefully at how the preferences of, if you're going to vote for a minor party, make sure where their preferences end up. Very good. Bev MacArthur is a member of Victoria's Upper House representing the Western Victoria region. She is the Liberal Party's number one candidate for Western Victoria Region on November 26. Thank you, Bev. Thank you, Peter, very much.